The empire of Hammurabi then flourished from 1700, uh, 1728, 1700 BC. And then I want you to look at this on the third page, uh, the Babylonian king list. You see, in addition to all these things like the year lists, there is a Babylonian king list. And by the way, after the end of Hammurabi's 43rd year, there is a year list of Samsu Iluna, who was his son. And there we have his particular list. But um, he didn't have to fight many wars. He built walls, he built uh, towers, and so on. But look at the next list, Babylonian king list. And there we can see these names. Hammurabi, Samsu Iluna, Amiditana, Amitsaduka. Why is Amitsaduka interesting or important? Because it so happened that, you know, this is a matter of chance, the things that were discovered. What was discovered of Amitsaduka's reign is a list which we call the Venus tablets. Now what does that mean? It reveals one of the aspects of Babylonian civilization. Babylonian civilization, even before Hammurabi in the, day, in, the, in the Sumerian period, had already developed. The Sumerian civilization had already developed a very high level of sophistication in the sciences. In certain sciences, namely astronomy, mathematics, they were able then to make lists and charts and predictions in astronomical phenomena. Now, how could they do that? Well, the one thing was observation. They would observe and make a list of every visible uh, heavenly body and its position, meaning at what point does Venus rise and set, and you keep a chart of this then you do the same thing for Mercury and Mars and Jupiter and Saturn, because these are the visible planets. Now, the Venus tablets of Amitsa Dukkha reveal that they kept a chart of the risings and settings of the planet Venus over a long, long period of time. They must also have done it for Mars and Jupiter and Saturn, because you don't neglect these, they're very important. And so they had lists of the movements of the planets. That means that they could also predict. The towers which were built, these temple towers, were not only centers of the city and not only places where they had the temple on top and the city hall and the code and the laws and the lawyers, it was also an observatory. So from these observatories, they were able to plot and predict the astronomical phenomena. The other thing that I discovered is that in these tablets, they have uh, thousands of astronomical and mathematical tablets. And the people who can read these not only have to be uh, you know, good scholars in cuneiform, but mathematicians as well. So they were able to decipher and read and understand what these Babylonian, Sumerian Babylonian astronomers had achieved, including uh, what we would call advanced algebra but written in their cuneiform form, quadratic equations. It's just one step below um, calculus, oh, quite advanced. Of course, they also set certain standards which we use today, and that was the division of the circle into 360 degrees and the division of the day into uh, 12 portions, which was subdivided into 2 times 12, so we have the 24-hour day, which was their creation. After all, isn't it a, an arbitrary number? If you have a certain phenomenon, you can divide it into 10 or 20. They said 12. 12 was their unit. 12 is a number which can be divided evenly by many factors. 60 is a number which can be divided evenly by many, many factors, except 7 and 13. So you have a convenient number which can be divided into many fractions and therefore their, their fractional mathematics was very accurate because they used these units, 5 times 12, 60, and you have a good number. They also had um, location, that is position, for the numbers. So it was, okay, so number one is, one is uh, the, one is one, okay? 
That's the cuneiform symbol of one. But then for 10, they had this number. This um, comes into there. They had this one. So you have this for one, this for 10, and then this would be 60. In other words, a larger one at the beginning, you'd know that this is 60. And then 1 is 1, and the corner wedge is 10. And then they built their mathematics. So you had, of course, 1, and then 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, and, and so on. Their mathematics was effective. It was functional. It was usable. And they got what they needed out of their mathematics. And of course, because 60 was their unit, they also divided uh, the hour into 60 portions. But then later on, we subdivided that into 60 seconds and so on. That's a later development. But these units are theirs. These units are Sumerian Babylonian. 12 times 5, 60, 24 hours in the day, and so on. <laughs>